Self-organized criticality characterizes the behavior of dissipative systems that contain a large number of elements interacting over a short range. The systems evolve to a critical state in which a minor event starts a chain reaction that can affect any number of elements in the system. Such systems are constantly driven by some random energy input evolving into a critical state that is maintained as a power law distribution. Self-organized criticality obeys the following characteristics. First, individual events must be statistically independent, spatially and temporally, leading to random wait time distributions. Second, the size or occurrence frequency distribution must be scale-free and be characterized by a power law function over some size range. And third, the detailed spatial and temporal evolution must be complex, involving fractal geometry and stochastically fluctuating time characteristics, sometimes modeled by one of rep noise, pink, white, red, or black noise. Self-organized criticality is often wrongly associated with physical sand piles. This misconception originated from the introduction in the first paper on self-organized criticality, where the metaphor of sand avalanches and a physical sand pile was used to describe a self-organizing system that reaches a critical state above the zero energy state. Soon after the publication, when experimentalists started to study physical sand piles and their avalanches in carefully controlled conditions, the physical analogy fell apart. A group at the University of Chicago performed two sets of avalanche experiments. However, in all cases, they found narrow distributions of avalanche lifetimes. There were no signs of power laws or critical behavior. They found instead that the dynamics of the system obeyed oscillatory behavior. We can see this in our simplified apparatus. Large avalanches occur at a relatively constant frequency. The slope of the pile reaches a maximum slope, at which point an avalanche the size of the entire pile relaxes the pile back to the angle of repose. Although this isn't critical behavior, while the average slope of the pile moves from the angle of repose to the maximum slope, small avalanches occur, and these small avalanches do follow a power law distribution. The existence of a characteristic length scale in the sand pile appears to come from inertial effects. Once an avalanche has started, it gains kinetic energy. The rolling grains become increasingly harder to stop, and they eventually end up affecting the whole slope of the pile. After finding that physical sand piles do not observe the features of self-organized criticality, experimentalists began taking trials with different granular media. The mass density of a rice grain is smaller than the mass density of a sand grain. One could therefore expect inertial effects to be of less significance to rice grain dynamics. In 2003, an experiment on three different grains of rice was carried out by a group in Oslo. They found that elongated rice grains exhibit behavior consistent with self-organized criticality, power laws, and the lack of a characteristic length scale. Some nice features that distinguish our rice pile from our sand pile are these smaller avalanches that don't span the entire length of the pile. I developed a cellular automation that simulates self-organized criticality. We start with a flat square table with an area of 2,500 grains. We then begin sprinkling grains on our table, one grain at a time. We can think of these grains as hypothetical sand particles that must obey the model discussed by Per Bach, the architect of self-organized criticality. Grains are allowed to stack on top of one another until they reach a critical height of four grains, at which point the grains avalanche and are distributed to the four adjacent neighboring stacks. We drop grains on a randomly chosen place on the table and repeat the act after all motion has terminated. In the beginning, the grains just fall on the table in no particular pattern. The system is close to the state with minimal energy, the flat sand pile. The system can also be characterized as linear. Small perturbations only cause small responses. But subsequently, while continuing to add new grains, we notice the formation of small local avalanches. The mechanism of the local avalanches is to decrease the local slope whenever the critical height is reached. 
Perturbing the system, the small grain piles provoked by avalanches create still greater piles, and eventually we end up with one big pile. At some point this pile ceases to grow. The pile has reached a statistically stationary state and additional grains of sand will ultimately fall off the pile. This state is far away from the state which minimizes the energy, the flat table. The avalanches are clearly necessary in order to relax the grain pile, but we also notice an unpredictability concerning the size of the avalanches. An avalanche is triggered the moment we add a grain that causes uh, the local height to exceed the critical value. The variation of the local height makes it impossible to predict what will happen when we add a new grain. Either it triggers a global avalanche or the perturbation simply results in small local rearrangements. Occasionally the additional grain just stays where it fell and no avalanche is produced. The system has, in some sense, infinite susceptibility. It reacts in a highly nonlinear way to small perturbations. As an output for my model, I plot avalanche size versus the number of iterations, which is equal to the number of grains we've added to the pile. We see that we reach the critical state where the size of the avalanches spans all length scales after we've added just over 20,000 grains to the pile. I've plotted as an output of my model a log-log plot of avalanche size versus avalanche frequency. We see two notable artifacts in the data. One appears to be linear, affirming the power law necessary to call our system critical. However, there's a second curve, which does not appear to converge to the same slope. Um, this anomaly does not even appear to be linear. right? I think this has something to do with the size of the table in the model. Uh, and I say this because the model proposed by Bach originally takes the limit of infinite system size. However, uh, you know, this question is up in the air, right? I'm very unsure why we see the second distribution and comments are very welcome. The metaphor of the granular pile describes a system with many units that interact locally. The pile reaches a dynamical attractor, which is far from the equilibrium state. There's no way we can study one grain uh, and infer the behavior of the resulting pile. A new behavior emerges as a result of interactions between the many simple units. And this is the very heart of complexity. We've demonstrated that self-organized criticality might occur in a slowly driven granular pile of rice, and that it for sure occurs right, in the cellular automation. However, the applications of self-organized criticality go well beyond granular piles and automations. Um, the basic picture, though, remains the same. Many slowly driven, non-equilibrium systems organized in a poised state, the critical state, where anything can happen within well-defined statistical laws. The seismic system is probably the most direct example of a self-organized critical phenomena in nature. The relative movement of tectonic plates causes strain to build up along the plate boundary. This system is analogous to our cellular automation, except instead of adding grains, we add strain. When the static friction cannot sustain the strain anymore, it is released through earthquakes, the statistics of which is described by the Gutenberg-Richter law. The scale invariant characteristic of the Gutenberg-Richter law becomes evident if it is transformed into a statistical distribution of sizes n uh, of the ruptured areas. Now, the important factor here is b. Uh, as described by Froelich and Davis, uh, the range of the exponent b is generally between 0.8 and 1.2 for earthquakes. And our model is in this range, right? We found our exponent to be 1.14, union between self-organized criticality and earthquakes. To summarize our discussion, we've shown how although physical sand piles do not display characteristics of self-organized criticality, other granular media do obey the behavior outlined by Per Bach. Through our cellular automation, we've shown some of the basic behavior of a system that organizes itself to a critical state in which avalanches occur on all length scales with the appropriate power laws. We've shown that avalanches of various sizes can be literal, as in the granular piles or the seismic system. But they can also be metaphorical, like mass extinction events uh, in biology, or stock market crashes in economics. In all cases, the large events are intrinsic to the dynamics and need no special explanation. The same forces that created a small earthquake in San Francisco yesterday also caused the 1907 earthquake. And similarly, the forces which made the Dow Jones average drop 5 points yesterday also caused the crash in 2008. The point being, self-organizing systems are everywhere. If you can find some power laws and illustrate the complexity, you might have a system that exhibits self-organized criticality. Thank you for watching.